I'm Lex Friedman. The following is a podcast summary of my conversation with Avi Loeb, an astrophysicist and cosmologist. In this conversation with Avi, we discuss the question of whether we are alone in the universe and the possibility of intelligent alien civilizations. Avi Loeb argues that it is arrogant to believe that we are the only intelligent beings in the vastness of space. He suggests that if we were to search well enough, we might find other civilizations that are even more advanced than us. He uses the metaphor of infants who initially think they are unique and special until they realize that there are other kids who are similar to them. Similarly, he believes that we haven't searched well enough to find other civilizations that may be better than us. He also points out that there are billions of sun-like stars with Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone, making it statistically unlikely that we are the only intelligent life. Avi Loeb encourages humility and open-mindedness in the pursuit of scientific knowledge, suggesting that the weird and taboo ideas should not be ignored as they may lead to breakthroughs and paradigm shifts. The conversation also touches on topics like black holes, dark matter, and space travel at the speed of light. The overarching message is that we should approach the question of extraterrestrial life with curiosity and humility, as there is much we don't yet know and much to learn from the vastness of the universe. Imagine you're at a fancy dinner party and a strange guest arrives. At first, no one knows who they are or where they came from. This mysterious guest is called Umwamua. They appeared one day near Earth in October 2017, coming from outside our solar system. Astronomers initially thought Umuamua was just a regular rock, like the asteroids and comets we've seen before, but it turned out to be something completely different. You see, Umuamua was not like anything we had seen before. It was long and skinny, like a pancake or a cigar, and it was tumbling and spinning as it moved through space. This unusual behavior got astronomers excited because it meant Umuamua could be something truly special. Some people even thought Umuamua could be alien technology. But the truth is, we still don't know for sure. What we do know is that Umuamua didn't have a comet tail or any sign of gas or dust around it like a typical comet. It was just a bare rock. But here's the really interesting part. Scientists discovered that Umuamua was experiencing an extra push in addition to the force of gravity. This meant that something was propelling Umuamua and making it move differently than expected. Imagine you're on a boat and the wind is pushing against a sail, making the boat go faster. This extra push on Umuamua was like the wind on a sail. So what could be causing this extra push? One possibility is that the sunlight reflecting off Umuamua was giving it a push, just like the wind on a sail. This is called a light sail, and it's a technology that we are actually working on for space exploration. The thing about this theory, though, is that for the sunlight to have such a strong effect on Umuamua, it would have to be incredibly thin, less than a millimeter thick. Nature doesn't produce objects like this, but humans can with our technology. So it's possible that Umuamua is actually a light sail, something created by an advanced civilization. Now, before you start picturing little green aliens sailing through space, it's important to remember that we still don't have all the answers. We need more evidence to say for sure what Umuamua is. That's why it's important to keep looking for more objects like Umuamua and getting as much evidence as possible. Science is all about evidence, not just assumptions or prejudices. And who knows, maybe next time we see something unusual, we'll be able to capture more photographs and learn even more about our mysterious universe. We talked about another recently discovered object in space named 2020. The object's characteristics and behavior led astronomers to believe it was of artificial origin, potentially created by humans or another civilization. The conversation also touches on the difficulty of identifying the object's origin due to the overlapping Oort clouds of different planetary systems. The idea of a cocoon is introduced, which is a habitat or environment created by advanced civilizations. However, the exact nature of such civilizations and their technology remains unknown and likely beyond our current understanding. The conversation encourages an open-minded approach to the possibilities and emphasizes the importance of continuing to explore and seek evidence rather than dismissing potential discoveries. Avi also discusses the likelihood of encountering life that is vastly different from what we know on Earth highlighting the diversity that may exist in the universe. Avi also discusses the purpose of science and the importance of curiosity and innovation. He emphasizes that science is not about glorifying oneself or winning prizes, but rather about understanding nature and figuring out the truth. 
Making mistakes and taking risks are inevitable and crucial for progress and innovation. Using metaphors from the real world, Avi compares the scientific community to an echo chamber, where individuals repeat the same ideas to receive recognition and rewards. He argues that this mindset hampers true scientific exploration and can make scientists boring. Instead, he encourages scientists to maintain their curiosity and explore the unknown, even if it means being wrong or challenging established views. Avi also discusses the reluctance of the scientific community to consider extraterrestrial technologies and the conservatism in the field of astronomy. He highlights the need for experimental tests and evidence-based reasoning, pointing out that even theology can be subject to experimentation. He argues that theories without the potential for falsification are not helpful for scientific progress, as they cannot be improved or refined. Our conversation also touches on the Drake Equation, a framework for quantifying the number of alien civilizations in existence. Avi explains that while the equation helps quantify our ignorance, it has limited validity because it only considers civilizations transmitting signals at the time of observation. He suggests that looking for artifacts left behind by extraterrestrial civilizations, even if they are no longer alive, could provide more fruitful avenues for exploration. Avi and I discussed the search for extraterrestrial life and the challenges faced by the scientific community. He explains that finding life on other planets is not as simple as detecting oxygen in the atmosphere, as there could be other natural processes that produce oxygen. Instead, he suggests looking for industrial pollution as a strong indication of advanced civilizations. However, Loeb acknowledges that there is a taboo surrounding the topic of extraterrestrial intelligence, which hinders funding and discourages young scientists from entering the field. He believes that this resistance to innovation leads to missed opportunities and delays scientific progress. Avi compares the situation to the discovery of exoplanets, which was initially ridiculed and resisted by mainstream astronomers. Eventually, funding was provided, and exoplanet research became a frontier in astronomy. He suggests that exploring the possibility of extraterrestrial life should be treated the same way, as it not only has scientific benefits, but also relates to the public's interest and support of science. The discussion also touches on UFO sightings, with Avi expressing skepticism and suggesting that most sightings can be attributed to artifacts or natural phenomena. He emphasizes the need for better evidence and scientific investigation to separate fact from fiction. Loeb encourages funding scientific instruments and research to clarify these sightings and address potential national security concerns. We talk about black holes, the ultimate prison. Once you enter, nothing, not even light, can escape. They are extreme structures of space and time, with a point of maximum density called the singularity at their center. However, we don't really know what happens at the singularity because our current theories break down. It's like when a plumber comes to fix a clogged sewer, but we're not sure where the water goes after it goes down the drain. We know black holes exist because of various observations and discoveries. In the 1960s, quasars were found, very bright sources of light, that are thought to be black holes feeding on gas. We can see these quasars all the way to the edge of the universe, which tells us there were black holes even when the universe was very young. In 2015, the LIGO Observatory detected gravitational waves, ripples in space and time caused by the collision of black holes. This was the first direct evidence of black holes and their gravitational effects. In 2017, the LIGO collaboration received the Nobel Prize for this discovery. The 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for both theoretical work and observational evidence. Roger Penrose received the prize for his mathematical work in the 1960s, demonstrating that black holes are inevitable when stars collapse. Andrea Ghez and Reinhard Genzel received the prize for providing strong evidence of a black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, based on the motion of stars around it. Moving on to the topic of mortality, Avi shares his perspective on death. He references Epicurus, who believed that there was no need to fear death since we will never encounter it. Loeb emphasizes the importance of appreciating life and maintaining humility due to its short-lived nature. He even mentions the practice in ancient Rome where mortals were reminded of their mortality by someone whispering in their ear. When asked about the meaning of life, Avi suggests that assigning a singular meaning is inappropriate. He believes that existence itself is enough, and we should simply enjoy the process of learning and exploring the world. He compares the relationship between science and spirituality to opening up a watch to understand its inner workings. Science helps us appreciate the world better and does not contradict religious or spiritual beliefs. 
I'm Lex Friedman, and I'd like to thank you for listening to this PodFast summary of my conversation with Avi Loeb. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. See you next time.